Hey, what's up? Mike with Maxonix here today to talk to you about the importance of batteries in your car audio installation. The battery provides reserve to your engine during starting. It discharges current to your accessories, and it acts as a buffer between your alternator and all of your electronic accessories. The battery powers everything when your car is off and in the accessory position. Your battery or batteries are important when you're determining what aftermarket audio equipment you can install and have it survive in your application. As demand becomes too great for your alternator, the battery is relied on for its reserve power until the demand drops and at that time the alternator can catch back up. That's why the batteries are commonly rated in many different ways. The most common way is amp hours. This is a unit of measurement for the battery capacity obtained by multiplying a current flow in amperes by the time and hours of discharge. It is very important to look at the number of hours that the battery manufacturer used to determine this value. Here's an example. A battery which delivers 5 amperes for 20 hours delivers 5 amperes times 20 hours or 100 amp hours. So this is a 100 amp hour battery and it can supply 5 amp hours per hour for 20 hours before dropping to 10.5 volts. At 10.5 volts the battery is fully discharged. This amp hour value is very important in determining the approximate wattage that your battery is capable of. If you simply multiply the amp hour rating by the voltage you get your watt hour rating. There are a few ways to determine the voltage value to be used, but I like to use 13 volts as a reference. This is where a deep cycle battery generally rests. Here's an example. 105 amp hours by 13 volts is 1,365 watt hours. You can take this a step further by calculating at 10.5 volts and then at 14.4 volts. This will provide a range of potential power at the worst and best case scenario. It is at this point that you need to factor in the approximate efficiency of your amplifier. I like to use 70% efficiency in my calculations. We know that your battery can produce 1,365 watt hours and your amplifier will consume this and produce approximately 70% of the watts it consumes. Here's your example. 1,365 watt hours times 0.7 equals 955 watts. Now factor in the ampere available from your alternator as indicated in the alternator tutorial and you will know what your electrical system is capable of. If you're building your system from the ground up then I'll teach you a quick way to determine what you will require based on specific amplifier selection. Let's say you have a 2000 watt amplifier and you want the proper electrical system to protect your aftermarket investment. Simply divide the 2000 watts by 70% efficiency and you get the input power required by that amplifier to get the 2000 watts. So your example is 2000 watts divided by 0.7 equals 2857. To figure the total amperage required by the amplifier we divide 2857 by 13 volts. So your example is 2857 divided by 13 volts is 220 amps. Next you'll combine the available amperage from the alternator. We will assume that you have a 60 amp alternator and 40% of that is used by the vehicle for normal use, leaving 60% of the alternator output for aftermarket accessories. Your example is 60 amps times 0.6 equals 36 amps. Now you'll subtract the available alternator amperage from the required total amperage for your amplifier to get the amperage required from your battery or batteries. Your example is 220 amps minus 36 amps equals 184 amps. Now you know that you should be looking for a single battery or multiple batteries with a total value of around 184 amp hours. During heavy continuous listening the voltage will fail and the potential output of your amplifier will be reduced until demand is reduced and the alternator can recharge the system. So the demand is rarely constant. Also keep in mind that we use 13 volts for the example but your amperage demand will be higher as the voltage drops and in the same respect lower as the voltage is closer to 14.4 volts. For this example we'll assume that you have a 2000 watt amplifier and that your amplifier requires 138.8 amps of current at 14.4 volts. We figure this by taking 2000 watts divided by 14.4 volts equals 138 amps. Now if your voltage drops 1 volt to 13.4 volts your amplifier now requires 149.3 amps to produce that same 2000 watts. We figure this by 2000 watts divided by 13.4 volts equals 149.3 amps. Now if the extra current isn't available in the system then the amplifier is reduced to a potential output of 1860 watts. We figure this by 138.8 amps times 13.4 volts equals 1860. This should help you see the importance of voltage in your system. As voltage drops, so does efficiency in the amplifier, which creates heat, and heat leads to damaged components. An amplifier may not reach the manufacturer's rate of potential if your electrical system does not meet the demanded requirements of the amplifier you have chosen. 
Now, if your installation requires a secondary battery, you're simply going to take a positive wire, run it from your front battery to your rear battery, fuse on the output of the front battery, and fuse on the input of the secondary battery. That way, if you get a short anywhere in between, you don't have a fire. Those fuses will pop and they'll protect your installation. You can also run your ground from the front battery to the rear battery, which is the best, but if you don't have the money for the additional wire, simply ground that rear battery to a strut tower in the back. Now, when you're determining what type of battery you actually need, price shouldn't be the main priority. You have to understand that deep cycle batteries are different than starting batteries because they've been designed specifically for multiple deep discharges. They'll continue to have reserve on multiple discharges, whereas a cranking battery or starting battery is going to discharge very quickly and not have much reserve. So when you're looking to compile your system and put everything together, you've already figured out what you require as far as your amp hour rating, definitely consider a deep cycle battery, especially for a car audio application. It's going to provide the most reserve, the best longevity, and best return on your investment.